<clears throat> about a year ago, back in, um, back in May, was it? May of 2019, we were up 2-0 against the Raptors, and if you told me that I would want Mike Budenholzer fired next August, I would have thought you were insane. But that's where we are. The Bucks were outscored 40 to 13 in the fourth quarter of this game. And that's the largest fourth quarter point differential in a playoff game in NBA history. I think it was any quarter. No, it wasn't in the playoffs. I saw he corrected himself in the tweet. In playoff history, there has never been a worse fourth quarter played by any team in NBA history than what we just saw the Bucks play in game three of this series. We did it in the biggest game of our season. Yep. Mike Budenholzer deserves to be fired for that. If I were the Bucks GM, I would even consider doing it right now just to make a statement. I mean, he has single, almost single-handedly tanked this team. I mean, you can almost. point to, you can point to the turnovers and, you know, the <clears throat> some occasional lack of effort and stupid shots by the Bucks. But for the most part, this team, if all of their starters played the minutes that they should, and the rotations were the rotations that should be out in a playoff game with your season on the line, then we would, the 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 Bucks would possibly be up 3-0 right now. Every single game the Bucks have played in the series has been a game that they should have won if it wasn't for Mike Boonholzer's poor lineup decisions. He should be fired right now. If I were the GM, I would seriously consider doing that. If I were John Horst, that's what I would consider doing. This team has too much talent. We, On paper, this team is better than the Heat. Maybe not miles better, but they are better than the Heat. Mike Budenholzer has all of the talent he, he needs, who he could possibly need. He has the league MVP. He has a two-time All-Star in Chris Middleton. He has a defensive player or a, a first-team all-defense player in Eric Bledsoe. He has Brooke Lopez, a contender for Defensive Player of the Year this year, and a former All-Star. four elite defenders in the same line. Wesley Matthews is a close to 40% three-point shooter and elite wing defender. That's our starting five. That is possibly, if not actually, the best starting five in the entire league. He plays Pat, Corey, and Dante over there. I mean, he, his obsession with, with these lineups, and, I, you know, I just don't understand. Wesley Matthews played 21 minutes tonight. Is it a coincidence that Jimmy Butler scored over 30 points in this game? No, it's not. I don't think he put any of the last like, 10 minutes either. Once nope. Or, or any of the fourth, I don't know. He didn't. It, the minutes that Giannis played, 35 minutes in this game. That is the lowest of the entire series and one of the lowest of the entire playoffs. The league MVP, Defensive Player of the Year going to be back-to-back -back MVP, and by the way, he will be accepting that MVP award either down 3-0 or having lost a series. Via Zoom, probably, too. Yep. That's what's going to happen. It's just... It's, it's an abomination that Mike Budenholzer could let it get to this point. And, you know, I have been a staunch defender of Mike Budenholzer throughout his entire career in Milwaukee, even up to this series. And, and in the in the Orlando series, he was treading on thin ice for me. He was, it was, it felt like he just, like something, like he just wasn't doing something right, you know. And, and he can go back to the Toronto series, but it's easy to explain that away because it was the first series in the postseason under Bud that we lost, right? He could chalk it up to, oh, Kawhi played amazing, and, and Fred Van Vliet shot 80%, and, you know, defensively they just, they were too much for the Bucks, right? You could, you could chalk it up to that. 
you had 15 fucking months to adjust, and he didn't. And that's another thing. He doesn't adjust. Mike Budenholzer does not care what happens on a game-by-game basis in the postseason. He was quoted last season in the po- in the postseason, or maybe it was after the Toronto series loss, as saying that he if he doesn't think that if we play Giannis 44 minutes or 40 minutes versus under 40 minutes, that it would make a difference. He doesn't think that... Um, that he, he doesn't he doesn't believe in making adjustments in the postseason. He said that we're gonna do what we've continued to do and hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. He you know before the playoffs last year, I kept hearing people t- say that the playoffs were a different monster than the regular season, and I just I, I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe it because as a Bucks fan, I, up until that point, I had no reason to believe it because we were playing so well and. It just looked like this team was, you know, destined to win a championship last year. And then the Toronto series happened, and uh, there was still a part of me that didn't really want to believe it, even though it was very clear at the time. And now we're here against possibly the worst matchup for the Bucks, the Heat, who are the second-best three-point shooting team in the league, against the Bucks defense, who gives up the most threes in the entire league. And Mike Budenholzer does not care. He does not make any adjustments whatsoever, and, you know, that's it. And, you know, really the biggest problem I have, though, is that we're not playing our starters like we should be playing them. Not even close. Because our starting five versus Miami's starting five is not even close. You, you, I mean, you, you play your starters 40 minutes. You play Giannis, Chris, Brooke, and Middle. Giannis, Chris, Brooke, and Blood all 40 minutes. And the Bucks probably win this game. Wesley, 30 plus would be nice. Yeah, Wesley, 30, 35 minutes. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Playing 22. No, you just think that once a team's on a run and you get a timeout finally, you'd put in, in good defensive players, but instead you keep putting Hill on Butler instead of Wesley. And it's like, I don't even hate playing George Hill in a close game because I understand the value he brings. But in this situation, it calls for something different. And Mike Budenholzer failed to recognize that. He failed to recognize that his best defender on Jimmy Butler is Wesley Matthews. And for some reason, and you know, I would have, I would be able to, you know, accept, you know, maybe an explanation that Wes might be injured But he's not because he played a lot more minutes in game two after game one we thought he was injured. And Wesley didn't play down the stretch of game one. He did in game two. So what's... And Jimmy Butler was limited in game two, by the way. The Heat just shot out of their minds. So... And they turned... The Bucks turned the ball over, of course, too. But... I just... I mean, really, the only simple solution right now to me to make this team better from this year to next year is firing Mike Budenholzer. But you know they're not going to do it. They're not, and they don't, they don't have the guts to do that because... You look at Jason, too. Uh, I mean, you could, you could point to... Remember when Toronto fired, was it Dwayne Casey after he had won Coach of the Year? Remember that? Mm-hmm. And everyone, like, everyone thought that was crazy, right? Why would you fire a coach that had gotten you there, right? To, who had won Coach of the Year? They, they, they hired an in-house hire, Nick Nurse. And look at what Nick Nurse has done with the Toronto Raptors since then. He's won a, he's won a finals, and he's got his team, you know, they're down 2-1 right now, but they were playing really, really well in the postseason before that and in the regular season. They have a chance. They have a chance. Oh, my gosh. Because Nick Nurse is a good, good coach, <clears throat> and he makes adjustments. He did in that Toronto series. He'd, he'd, have, us, he'd have us up 3-0 right now. He was our coach. Yeah, it, it, it really, there are so many things you can criticize from players every single game, but really the only constant for me in this series so far <clears throat> is the fact that our starters aren't playing the minutes that they should, and our rotations, especially in the fourth quarter, have been dreadful. And that's all <clears throat> on Mike Budenholzer, all of it. I, I don't even want to hear the excuse, well, we're turning the ball over, that's not his fault. It, it kind of is, actually. Because you look how sloppy and unprepared we are. You see that how unprepared we are sometimes. Yeah, I yeah. do. And that's the that's that, your head that's your fault, fault on coaching, right? Ninety percent of the turnovers are on but I don't go fuck. And it's you, you think about like Giannis too with his <clears throat> shot and everything, right? Who is the person in charge of helping him get better at that? 
it's it's shouldn't it be the head coach? I mean, Jason Kidd had so much power over Giannis that he told him to stop shooting threes, and that screwed up his shooting form. So, I don't know. And I I don't know why Giannis was even taking those threes to begin with. I mean, he was playing, especially in the third, beginning of the fourth quarter, he's playing so well. They give him the ball uh, near the top of the free throw line, and he'd either drive or create from there. And they just stopped doing that, especially in crunch time. Why did they stop doing that? The The only thing I hated that they stopped doing is that Bam had three fouls at the end of the second quarter, like two minutes left. And you think, you know, your coach would be like, all right, drive on him. They stop. They didn't drive on him. Yeah. Because he can't. He can't pick up number four before halftime or even early third. You have to drive on him. You have to. He's gonna. He's Bam's gonna give you that since he can't commit a foul. And that's your coaches. Coach. Coach has to tell you that, and he didn't. So we're getting pretty lengthy on the video, about eleven minutes now. So I'm gonna try and wrap it up, but. To summarize entire video, fire bud. Yeah, and that's what the title of this video is going to be. It's going to be Fire Mike Budenholzer because I look at everything that this team is going through right now and I point the one source of the all the problems right now is the head coach. I mean, you, you, they're not, like Ryan said, they're not, like you can look past just the coaching decisions themselves. The players are simply not prepared for it. They weren't prepared to close out this game tonight. They weren't prepared to close out the game in game two or game one. So whose fault should that be? You can say the players, but the head coach is responsible for getting the players ready to to close games. He should be, you know, drilling it into their heads what exactly they're going to do in a situation like that. And what does it look like every time the Bucs are in a close game in the fourth quarter? They're just running around unsure of what to do. It's like Mike Budenholzer thinks that they're just going to blow him out every single time. He, he, it's like he doesn't think that that will ever happen, that we'll never get in a close game like that in the playoffs because the Bucks look completely clueless and unprepared. You want to know why the Bucks always seem to lose when it's a close game in the fourth quarter when they're not blowing a team out? Because they're not prepared for that kind of situation, and that falls on the head coach. So that's really all I got to say, though. That's all I got to say about this. I'm not going to go too far more into it because I'm already close to 13 minutes here, but... God damn, we need to fucking fire Mike Budenholzer, dude. And I I can't believe that after last season, you know, how good we were and how good we were this season, that I'm actually at the point of saying that. But we are down 3-0 to a team we could be up 3-0 on, and I see the root of all the problems as the head coach, Mike Budenholzer. So, you know, it took guts for Toronto to fire Dwayne Casey after he won Coach of the Year. It's going to take guts from the Bucks front office to fire... It's guts, it's common sense. <laughs> It's still going to take guts to do it for the Bucks, and they need to take that that chance. I don't think they will. I don't think they will either, but they need to if they want to win a championship with Giannis. And to be honest, <coughs> my confidence, and you just coughed on my hand, thanks. I don't give a fuck. Sorry. Go on. I, don't, I forgot what I was going to say. Bye. Bye.